My dad died earlier this year. Monday marked six months, and I have spent those six months trying to figure out how to move about a world where I can't just call him and ask him what I'm supposed to do now. He's not here, but the lack of him is everywhere. My prevailing moods these days are rage and devastation, and often the only thing for me to do is sit in that because there's not much else I can do, but also it is really easy to drown in that place. One thing I am trying to do, and stick with me here, is appreciate the view more. I am trying to take in sunsets and trees and mountains and every other beautiful view that makes me think he would have loved this. This is, of course, the most offensively generic platitude advice imaginable. Remember your loved one when you see the beauty in the natural world. But here's the thing. My dad was usually the first one to point out the view. He started taking us on hikes when I was a little kid, and maybe he was just trying to catch his breath, but he stopped a lot to point out how great the view was from many different heights. He was the guy leaning over to say, oh, wow, would you look at that view? He was the Midwestern dad standing on the back patio watching the storm. He took blurry cell phone photos out airplane windows that he texted to my mom, and he loved all manner of impressive sights, perhaps especially a good sunset. My dad was really good at appreciating little things. Uh, this is true of his pride in us. <laughs> he was proud of every tiny, insignificant thing we did. And he appreciated little things in the world around him. The summer before he died, I ate dinner with my parents a few nights a week, usually outside. He would cook on the grill like the peak Midwestern dad that he was. And then we sat down and he basked in the sight of the life he had built. Night after night, my dad was awed by the sunsets. It was the same sunset, but no less impressive to him for it. Our places were set out in a row, kind of like we were a TV family, so that we could admire the sunset with him. He was the guy saying, wait, just look at this for a second. Appreciate this. He saw and did so much in his time on this earth, and yet he never stopped appreciating it. He fucking loved being alive. There is so much more I can say about the adventures he went on, or the fact that he was the smartest and most curious person I knew, or the way he would remember something he heard on the radio 20 years ago, but among his many wonderful traits was this ability to cherish small moments. So, I am trying to channel that appreciation for tiny wonders. Admittedly, I am doing it not so much with enthusiasm as with the desperation of someone drowning, but I'm trying. I started taking pictures and videos of sunsets and asking my family to do the same. The thing about a picture or a video of a sunset is that it's never quite as good as the real thing. Even the best ones are always just a near approximation of the beautiful thing you saw with your own eyes, never quite as awe-inspiring as the thing you actually experienced in person. And so, of course, goes the whole exercise. <laughs> the joy I am grasping for in these moments is an echo of something better. The photo is nice. But the real thing was incredible. You really had to be there, you know? And it's never going to be the same. But when I try to decide who I'm supposed to be now, maybe this is one absence I can try to fill. He is no longer here to lean over and tell me to look at that sunset or try to take a photo himself. I'm not including examples because his photography skills are meant only for those who have been trained to appreciate them. My father viewed the world with so much wonder, and as my literal existence is his legacy, the best way to honor him is to embody that same energy. I can't do it all the time, and I'm still figuring out how to carry that awe alongside the devastation, but as I'm trying to figure out what the fuck I'm supposed to do now, this seems like a good place to start. Since he is not here to ask you to appreciate this view, uh, it falls to me, so... I will leave you to it.